dynamic walking is, uh, this is the fifth year we've had it. It's about the science of walking. Half of us uh, study the physiology of walking, so we care about how people walk. And the other half of us study uh, robotics, so we care about making better walking robots. And we learn from each other. We get together every year and we do this, and it's, it's a really fun time. I'm um, Thomas from uh, Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands. And um, we built this uh, robot within the group. So it's, um, we call it a limit cycle walker. And it's uh, a robot that um, we hope walks a bit like a human. And uh, so we think of walking being constant falling and getting your uh, foot uh, in front in time so you don't fall. Now what it has to do, it has to know where it is in the world. So it's just moving its legs and figuring out, figuring out what is up and what is down. This took us about one and a half years to develop with um, a group of students and uh, two employees of the university. I'm Michael Levishoff, and I'm an MIT graduate student as, as, a, as a lab studying robotic locomotion. This is a little dog. This is a project sponsored by DARPA, where they give uh, robots to universities so that you can study locomotion and develop controllers uh, for new generation of robotics. So right now, it's actually doing a very simple gate, all completely open loop because it doesn't know anything about its environment, it's completely blind. Yeah. It has these mocap markers. Normally, it's in the, in the side of motion capture environment, and it can tell its position inside the environment so it can navigate the terrain pr properly. I'm from Michigan State University. It was dynamic walking in 2006 that actually got me interested in walking and in robots in general. We initially started to build this robot um, based on a previous design of a, a rolling wheel, actually. So the feet have the same radius as the leg length. And right now we're using just a partial feedback linearization method in order to track trajectories. I'm Clive Mullins. I'm the chief engineer for Bionic Power. And we work out of SFU. We're, doing, we're developing uh, energy harvesters. This is an energy harvester that uh, harvests power about the knee joint. And this is, we, uh, we drive a generator through a, through a gear train and control the generator with this, uh, this, this module here. This intelligently controls the load that the generator sees so that we harvest power only during phases of the gate where the muscles are doing negative work. This is our second generation uh, energy harvester. It moves the mass further up the leg for more comfortable load carriage. This one, uh, instead, of, instead of dissipating the power just in resistors, actually charges the batteries and uses a handheld uh, computer module here. So there's a, there's, a, there's a computer chip inside here which controls the algorithm, runs an algorithm to intelligently turn on the, uh, the power generation and turn it off during the appropriate phase of, of the gate. Since I left SFU, I've been working on aircraft, again, robotic aircraft. When I, before I came here, I was an aeronautical engineer, and after I left, I was an aeronautical engineer again. So I've been building little airplanes that uh, go a long way. Now I'm originally from SFU, Lewis University, and I graduated here with my PhD degree in robotics. And then I move on to a postdoc in biomechanics. I'm working on design the biomechanical energy harvester. And for three years, and we did develop the first prototype. And now currently, I move on to become an assistant professor at Queen's University in Ontario. And my research will focusing on developing more biomechanical devices to help the people with uh, uh, disabilities and also monitoring the progress for rehabilitation. Hello, my name is Martin Krumer. I'm from Germany, at, from the University of Vienna, and I've built this prosthesis. I would call it it's a type of orthoprosthesis because it's a combination of prosthesis 
and for the uh, for the Thai um, herb pieces. The aim of my study was to strengthen the push-off during walking. What I've done, uh, we integrated springs uh, to strengthen the push-off. Uh, the most important thing is the B-articular uh, spring. Uh, it should be like the, it should work like the muscle musculus gastrocnemius. I'm working on this in my diploma thesis uh, at the Sport Science Institute in Germany, Jena. Working for the Biomechatronics Research Group under the supervision of Professor Huher where we developed uh, de rehabilitation and human augmentation devices. Uh, what you're seeing here is a prosthetic knee adapted to a commercial device, so it can be tested on able-bodied people before you try on real amputees. So right now what you will see is when I power on the knee, um, what it's gonna do, it's gonna bend, it's gonna come down and then it's gonna stiffen up. The purpose of this knee is to behave as uh, a biological counterpart and um, try to help amputees walk better. What I mean by walking better is improving their speed, improving their gait symmetry, as um, well as reducing the amount of effort that it takes them to walk as compared to their conventional passive uh, prosthetic. The input to the character is the direction that it should be going in, as well as the, the speed. So here we can see Philippe uh, controlling the speed, which is indicated by the size of the arrow. And now it's trying to get the character to go over this ramp. Um, so, and, the con and the character is trying to uh, obey the commands of the user as best as possible. And that's the autonomous part of our simulation. So when you step on the heel, the spring bends. So all that energy is locked into this big leaf spring. We're from the, the University of Michigan, and the idea is to apply some of the dynamic walking principles to amputee gait, and hopefully use uh, a recycling approach to improve amputee gait while not using big motors or any type of uh, heavier expensive equipment to, to add push off to the system. The energy is stored in a spring at the bottom of the foot. You'll see the heel compress and stop, it'll lock into place. And then it'll remain in place as he moves through single stance. And then as he transitions to his other leg, as we would during normal walking, he's gonna push off. And the energy he stored at collision is then gonna be returned at push off. No plans for legged locomotion except hopefully to hand out $200,000 at some point in the not too distant future when somebody wins the W Prize, which is a challenge to uh, uh, produce a machine with an exceptional combination of speed, dexterity, and efficiency. So we've set a task that combines those um, three things. And if people succeed in doing it, it will be a substantial advance in making land robots. It was a really nice conference, so it's uh, nice to learn from uh, people who uh, really look at humans, as we tend to look mostly at robots, and it's a good uh, sharing of knowledge.